How do you do, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and men and women, and children, and mothers and fathers and teachers, men of the cloth and others, all my friends abundant everywhere. I am the professor. Julia Sumner Miller is my name, and physics is what we do. And we explore now why the Earth is flattened at the poles. Why it is flattened at the poles. Consider the following. I have here two steel hoops, which are mounted on a vertical shaft, fixed firmly at their junction here, but free to slide on that polar diameter at the top. Now, I am going to rotate this system about that central vertical axis in the manner of the Earth rotating, and I'll increase the speed of rotation, and you'll see an astonishing thing take place. Watch closely. Watch closely. Slow speed. I'm going to make it go faster. Go faster. Go faster. There it is. And you see that the Earth is flattened at the poles. This has enormous consequences. Enormous. You see, a point on the equator goes once around in 24 hours. A point at some northern latitude or southern latitude goes around in the same 24 hours, but less distance. Accordingly, we are moving. Those of us who live on the equator, or those who do, are going very fast, about 1,000 miles an hour. That reminds me to say to you, imagine all of the mystery of this. Not only is the Earth turning on its own axis, rotation, giving us the days and nights, but it is as a body going around the sun once a year, which we call the revolution about the sun. And let me say a word about that. Oh, because this is very enchanting. Look here. I am going to exaggerate the ellipticity of the orbit of the Earth around the sun. I've exaggerated it enormously. Notice it's nearly circular. But supposing we, for purpose of argument, make it like so, there is the sun right there. Now, I say to you, let the Earth be right here sometime of the year. Sometime. We say that line which connects the sun with the Earth is called the radius vector. Just a name, like my name is Julius Sumner Miller. Now, let some time elapse. The Earth is moving around the sun, and let it get over to here at E2 sometime later in the year. You see what has happened? The radius vector has... Let me take a stick and show you. The radius vector has swept out this area. Now, sometime later, later in the year, the Earth is over here at E3. I'm having it go this way. Now the radius vector is that line. Now there is a law of Kepler, which is wonderful to contemplate. Kepler, the second law, says that the radius vector sweeps out equal areas in equal times, meaning that there must become an area here, the Earth moving from E3 to E4, that area there swept out must be the same as this area swept out. Now, do you see the consequence of this? This distance here is vastly greater than this one, this time being the same as this one. Accordingly, when the Earth is nearer the Sun, it has to go faster. <clears throat> Excuse me. Why? To keep out of the clutches of the gravitational pull of the Sun.